Good evening everyone. In this video, I'll be discussing uh, paired sample t-test. Uh, that is a much sorted test. Exactly. So I'll straight away discuss an example. <clears throat> so the example says that a trainer hired him to improve soft skills of employees in a firm. In order to uh, measure the impact of the training, pre and post training tests on soft skills are conducted. Scores of 20 employees out of 40 are listed in the table. Does training leave a significant impact on the employees? So, uh, what this particular data set is about, like before organizing training session, a uh, test has been conducted on the soft skills to know the overall level of soft skills of different employees. And uh, post training, again, uh, a test has been conducted. I am uh, not commenting on the types of tests who prepared them and this and that, so that's a longer discussion which I cannot carry out here. So two tests are taken <clears throat> and I just want to check whether uh, training session has uh, created or uh, actually impacted uh, the soft skills of the people or the employees significantly. So uh, I first of all formulate minor and alternate hypothesis and this is the box in which I have shown both of the things. Uh, so null hypothesis here is there is no significant impact of training on employees. So that is my null hypothesis and alternative is that H0 is not true. That means that impact is significant. Either you write the hypothesis uh, this way in the text format or you can write it in this way where D bar is representing the average difference of pre and post scores. That means post score minus pre score that gives you D value and you can take the average of those uh, differences. So uh, whatever way you formulate the hypothesis that is correct so uh, in order to uh, for, uh, test these hypotheses what I do is I use a paired sample t-test so same way I just go to data data analysis and there I carefully pick up t-test paired two sample for means so this is the test I am just picking up the test to show you that what are the entries uh, which this particular test requires. So it requires variable range 1, variable range 2, hypothesized mean difference. So if you look into null hypothesis, I have taken d bar is equal to 0. So I'll be putting up this value is equal to 0. Labels in first row since I have my given my columns heading. So I will ask Excel to consider my first two entries in the column as labels or headings. My alpha value is by default set and output range I'll just give it a cell where I want to place my output. So variable range 1, so I'm going to select my pre-session scores, B1 to B21. Then I'm going to select my variable range 2, post-session uh, scores, right here. <clears throat> then I pick up the hypothesized mean difference, which is 0, and I've already written it here. Labels in first row, alpha value by default, output range. Let us suppose I want to paste my output in this cell right here and I click OK. So uh, it pops up the required statistics here and uh, so I can see mean uh, score average scores of pre and post session and I can actually observe that post session the scores actually improved a bit. And then I got uh, variance that means pre-test the variance was low, post-test the variance is higher. Now this is exactly uh, the portion which I am more interested in. I'll just reduce the decimal points. It looks a little better now. So uh, since it is a two-tailed test, a paired uh, sample is a two-tailed test. So I'm interested in two-tailed values more or less, like these two entries right here I'm interested in. Two-tailed values. Just give it a little different color. And I'm uh, interested in t-stats. So now this is a little... Uh, important thing to understand. So I'll go with my critical value approach which I generally go with. So critical total value is 2.093. So this particular value simply means because I'm using a two-tailed test that it is negative 2.093 and the positive 2.093 because it is on two tails. So uh, so what I have to see is whether my, uh, so these two points are 2 point minus 2.093 plus 2.093. I have to see my T stats, whether it is uh, below or above these particular values or it falls within this particular range. 
So I'm repeating this particular thing. I just need to check whether it falls within this particular range, my T stats, that means this value, whether it falls within this range or it is outside these two uh, values. So it is clearly outside. If I just drop an arrow and I just try to see it, then this particular value is falling outside. That means below negative 2.093. So what I do in this particular case, these are the reasons of rejection. That means below this value and above this value is are the reasons of rejection. Within this range is the reason of acceptance. So I reject null hypothesis in this particular case. I reject null. This is one way to do it. Other way, if you uh, can go a little logical and you have a little in-depth knowledge of the stats. So you can ignore the negative sign. And then uh, if you ignore the negative sign, then this value simply becomes this. And now you can compare it with this particular value. If it is above reject, below do not reject. So if I see ignore the negative sign 3.231, it is above 2.093. So you can <coughs> reject the null hypothesis. Same way you can, uh, other way approach I have already discussed, you can compare your p-value with alpha value, which was 0 0.05 in this particular case. So if my p-value is below alpha, then I reject. If it is above, I do not reject. So if I see 0 0.04 is below 0 0.05, so again I reject null. So uh, I'm repeating this thing. I have said it several times. One is a p-value approach, which is compared with respect to alpha, and other is a t-critical value approach, which is compared with t-stats. So both are, uh, I would say, the, these approaches are in a way opposite to each other. Uh, like if t stat is above t critical you reject but if p value is below alpha then you reject so thank you very much that is uh, the so if i reject okay one more thing if i reject null hypothesis what does it mean the reject that means h0 is not true that means training actually has left a significant impact on uh, the employee soft skills so it's a worth trainer rehire him